battle against the Islamic State is not expected to be over in the near term. Even Pentagon officials say it could take three years, if not longer. And joining us to talk about all of this is Jonah Blank, a senior political scientist at the RAND Corporation, a policy think tank here. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's get a handle on this. How large is the Islamic State? Do you have any estimates at all of, about the number of fighters that are out there right now? Are we talking to thousands, tens of thousands and growing? Yes, well, thank you for having me, Elaine. Estimates are that the Islamic State, as it, as it calls itself, or ISIL or ISIS, as it's more properly known, has perhaps tens of thousands of fighters. The real strength, however, comes not just from its own fighters, but from its alliance with the disbanded troops and officers of the Iraqi army both those that served under Saddam Hussein and those who were kicked out after as the Iraqi army became more of a Shia militia. I want to ask you something that came out in the Wall Street Journal. You know, many here in the West, including the United States, are looking to the Middle East, as we heard Nathan's report, uh, to take a lead in trying to combat IS. Um, and the editorial board for the Wall Street Journal said, um, it's good that Mr. Obama is finally recognizing the threat to the region and the U.S. from Islamic State. But it is important that he tell the truth about what he's asking Americans to support. Air power alone won't defeat the jihadist army, and so some U.S. forces will have to be deployed on the ground. Now, they've said there's a red line, no U.S. troops on the ground. What do you say? Well, President Obama has been quite clear that this is not going to be a third war in Iraq. He said there will not be U.S. combat troops. We're not going to have a heavy U.S. presence. That's different from saying zero U.S. troops on the ground. There may well be some uh, U.S. special operations forces, perhaps some CIA forces in very limited numbers. I would guess numbers in the hundreds. And that really is uh, about the extent that I would expect to see a U.S. ground presence. There is no appetite among the American public and really no appetite that we can see in the president himself for a significant U.S. ground presence. So some, could some of the players in the Middle East agree and band together and take this common goal and actually get something done in, in defeating IS? Well, that's the hope, because IS threatens and challenges the neighborhood much more than it does the U.S. IS is a, a threat to U.S. citizens and interests, but it's an existential threat, not only to the governments and people of Iraq and Syria, but to the governments and people of Saudi Arabia, Turkey, Jordan, and uh, Lebanon as well, potentially, as governments and peoples throughout the Middle East. Now, it's been said that one way to combat IS is to take away its funding. Where is its funding coming from? Who or what is funding it? And is that a good solution? Well, this is a real challenge because IS gets its funding from a variety of sources. It may well be bringing in a million dollars a day. Some of these sources include oil. IS controls a lot of the oil revenue that comes through Iraq right now. It taxes all of the things that governments normally do in the areas it controls. It taxes businesses, individuals, and services. It also gets funds from a variety of under-the-table donors in the Gulf and elsewhere in the Middle East, particularly Sunni donors who have suspicions about Shia uh, encroachment. And the last major source of funding is criminality, extortion, theft, shakedown, all of the things that a, uh, an organized crime syndicate might uh, fund itself through. So it's not as easy as going straight to the banks. Jonah Blank, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.